great. Okay, I guess I'll start then. Yep. So uh, thanks for coming out, everybody. Uh, in terms of questions, um, I don't mind uh, if this is you know fairly informal. So if you feel like you want to interrupt me, you can uh, you know signal uh, signal Brian or just come up and grab the mic. It's fine. Um, so don't feel like you have to wait until the end uh, if you don't want to. Um, so the title of the talk is is Darwin's algorithm building creatures in simulation. And so um, what I'm going to be talking about are, is the use of uh, principles from Darwin's ideas of natural selection uh, and also those of genetics, so being combined together um, and used uh, in a bunch of different uh, computer algorithms that are out there, um, in fact, a whole zoo of them. Uh, and together, these are all collectively known as evolutionary computing. So that's more or less the topic. Um, so I'm going to talk about the basics of, of how these algorithms work uh, in a fairly, fairly general way. And I'll use an example of 3D uh, virtual creature evolution um, just as a demonstration at the end, sort of uh, because it's interesting to see and also sort of promotes a program that I've just written. So if we can go to the next slide. Um, so I am uh, a student working on my doctorate in computer science at uh, Carleton University in Ottawa, Canada, and I study uh, computer science, more specifically uh, artificial intelligence, and more specifically than that, evolutionary computing. So that's the, the little niche that I, that I found for myself. And uh, so despite the slight similarity, I am not in fact uh, Gordon Freeman. I don't even own a crowbar. Are there any Half-Life fans? <laughs> oh, well, anyway. That's both the extent of my humor ability. So, uh, next slide. Um, so, the topic is, as I said, evolutionary computing, which is a subfield of artificial intelligence. So, artificial intelligence is, by now, a, a pretty broad field uh, containing a lots of different subdisciplines that, uh, in some way or other, involve machines learning in some sense. And so evolutionary computing is specifically the subfield that's, that uses principles from biological evolution uh, as a problem-solving technique. And so these are, these are principles like uh, you know, population, mutations, uh, recombination, selection, etc. I'll, I'll get into some of that when I, when I outline the basics of a couple of the algorithms. So there are quite a large number of algorithms. Some of the more common ones are uh, the two that I'll be talking about uh, tonight, that is uh, genetic algorithms. These are sometimes just referred to as GAs for short, and genetic programming, which is a bit of a spin on, on genetic algorithms, and that's often called GP for short. Another is uh, learning classifier systems. There's evolution strategies. There's estimation of distribution algorithms. If you, if you check the literature, you'll find a whole bunch, but they all basically have the same sorts of principles, but they're just sort of different flavors. And uh, all of them together are... Uh, what we call uh, meta heuristics, and so what that means—it's a fancy-sounding term. It, it essentially means that these are sort of general uh, heuristic approaches. And a heuristic approach is another way to think of it as just a rule of thumb. You see the word heuristic replace it with rule of thumb. It's all it essentially means. It's it's a a method or or, or a rule uh, for solving a problem that isn't proven to be optimal, but but works fairly well. That's a heuristic. And so the algorithms. Um, that exist in evolutionary computing often tend to be used when um, very domain specific techniques are not available. So, those are that you, you have a problem where you don't have some really strong uh, theoretical models that are going to point you toward an optimal solution. And so, in, in many of those cases, you can apply a, a meta heuristic such as evolutionary computing to attempt to solve the problem. So, we'll go to the next slide. And uh, so, the algorithms in evolutionary computing are all uh, population-based searches, and they're stochastic. And so when we say stochastic, all that really means is another one of those sort of fancy-sounding words. It just means that uh, within the recipe of how the problems are going to be solved, there are some steps that are random. And so it's not completely deterministic. Um, that's all that means, essentially. And uh, for those who are familiar enough with evolution, you can probably already guess uh, the sorts of steps that are involved in these algorithms that are random. Uh, that is the steps that correspond to uh, mutations in biology. And uh, so I just called these things search algorithms, which may, uh, for people who aren't familiar with them, that, that may seem like a strange way to phrase it, but in computer science we're pretty used to talking about things that way. W what is it exactly that we're searching for? 
uh, the, the simple answer is we're searching for the solution to some given problem. Um, and in fact, the terminology is often uh, that we talk about searching in, in what's called a search space. And a search space is like a, a great big network of nodes where you can step from one node to another and each node is a potential solution to the problem. And so you're hunting through this space uh, trying to find a really good node, a really good problem. This is just the way that we, we usually end up talking about these things. Um, so what sort of solution am I talking about? It could be um, just a set of parameters for some problem. Um, you know, maybe they're the parameters for, uh, for some sort of a machine in a factory, something like that. Uh, they could be a schedule of some sort. It could be a recipe. Uh, it could, all, could also be some sort of a multidimensional structure like a, a truss for a space station or uh, the curvature of a wing uh, or the, the, the shape of a tube for, it, for, uh, for passing fluid, anything like that. Um, if you can encode the solution somehow into something that resembles a chromosome, uh, which I'll get to in a minute when I'm talking about, uh, you can apply evolutionary algorithms to try to find a, a good solution. So these are not necessarily going to be optimal solutions to the particular problem. Um, generally, if you can find an optimal solution, it, it usually means uh, that you, you do have some good, strong theoretical model uh, that's leading you to it. But in those cases where you don't, um, evolutionary algorithms are often called uh, satisficers. It's a term you'll, you'll sometimes see thrown around. What satisficing means uh, is just that you're finding a solution that's adequate, uh, but not necessarily optimal. Uh, the word kind of sounds like a cross between satisfy and suffice. So the idea is that you're not optimizing, but you're, you're doing pretty good. That's generally what the word means. Um, so all of the sorts of problems to which one can apply uh, evolutionary computing have some sort of uh, degrees of solution quality. So that is, these aren't all or nothing problems. Either it works or it doesn't work and there's no in between. So there's always some sort of a degree uh, of quality. And that means that you need to be able to distinguish uh, worthless solutions from slightly less worthless solutions. Uh, and also you'd need to be able to distinguish excellent solutions from slightly less excellent solutions. And so as long as you've got some way to measure the quality of a solution that provides a reasonable gradient, um, then that's the sort of thing that, that uh, an evolutionary process can sink its teeth into and, and uh, to, to use a metaphor, to slowly climb its way up uh, to the really good solutions. And so what do we mean by uh, calling these things population-based searches? And uh, all we mean by that um, is that um, we're doing a step-by-step -step process that modifies a number of different candidate solutions. And so if you look at any of the evolutionary algorithms, you'll find that at any one stage in the process, you've got a whole population, a whole collection of potential solutions. And what you are, you're, you're doing some sort of a processing with that entire population, as opposed to, say, taking a single solution and just tweaking it and tweaking it uh, toward a better and better performance. You've generally got a whole population of them. Just like in biology, you have a population of organisms, and it's the population that evolves and not the individuals. It's the same sort of principle, but it's all done in the computer. And uh, so you can call this a learning algorithm, um, but it's important to keep in mind that it's the population itself that does the learning. Uh, so just like in biology, you wouldn't talk about an individual evolving Right. Uh, so since the time you were born until now, you haven't evolved. You've got the same genome that you had, except for possible mutations along the way, but you're not evolving. But the population you came from is in the midst of evolving. And so within these algorithms, we have populations that evolve, and that's the learning process. They learn to become better solutions. So if we go to the next slide, um, as I said, evolutionary computing is, is a, a fairly broad field now with a lot of different algorithms couple of which I mentioned. And the two that we're going to look at uh, just briefly here is uh, the genetic algorithm, the GA. This was first proposed by uh, John Holland, sometimes referred to as the father